Hi, in this video we're going to review the properties of red black trees and also see how the process of inserting into a red black tree works. So right here I have a binary tree that's completely unbalanced. So if you were to want to put values on this uh, you could say something like this is a 10, this is a 9, 8, 7, and just keep going down the line. Uh, it's possible for a tree to look like this even though this doesn't even resemble a tree and when this is the case the complexity for searching on a tree like this actually equals order of n and which if you know your complexities you know that that's extremely slow and the reason for it is because the system will have to iterate through every single node looking for the item that it wants. And so there's been a ton of research on how to fix that. And one of the procedures that people use is to create a red-black tree. And a red-black tree, what its goal is, is to develop a well-balanced tree. And trees which remain balanced, and then they can guarantee a search uh, complexity of order of log n. And in a dynamic environment, they also can be rebalanced. So as you insert, the tree will actually rebalance itself. Uh, there is an additional complexity, which also equals uh, the order of log n while that's happening. So you have to you have to kind of know that that's something that's required. However, it is a great way of making sure that you do have a balanced tree. Uh, it's also important to know the properties of a red-black tree. Some of the properties are that every node is either red or black. Every leaf null is black, meaning that every single leaf, uh, whether whether it be red or black, has what's called a sentinel node, which is a null node, which is a pointer to nothing. It's essentially used just so you know when you've reached a leaf. It's just something, and this is not something that is unique to red-black trees. Uh, bee trees use something very similar as well, so it's uh, you'll come across that quite a bit. Another thing to know is that the root node is always covered black. There's no path from the root to the leaf that has two consecutive red nodes. Nodes are inserted in the same way initially, just like a binary search tree, and we're going to go through that process here in a minute. And then the tree is fixed by recoloring, which we're also going to go through a live animation to see how this works. And then uh, one of the last properties is that each of the paths from the root to the leaves have the same number of black nodes. So now we're going to go and uh, see the way this actually works on a practical basis. So I'm going to start by inserting a node and I'm going to give it a value of 10. And you'll see that that node is colored black and by default that is the root. Now I'm going to give it a 12 or add a 12. So it looks at, this, uh, at the root, it realizes 12 is larger than 10, and it adds 12 to the right-hand side. If you know anything about binary search trees, you know that that's the way they work as well. Now I'm going to add an 11, and you'll see that when I add the 11, it's going to start by being inserted to the left of the 12, but the tree is going to recognize that now it's imbalanced, and then it's going to fix itself. So you'll see it looks at the 10, then the 12 goes to the left, and then realizes, hey, this is an imbalanced tree. So it moves to the left, and then it actually readjusts, and you can see it makes the 11 now the root node. So uh, this is when that you get to go through the actual algorithm, you'll see it's recursive, which means that it looks at every single uh, parent option and then adjusts itself based off of that value. And the whole goal of a red-black tree is to continually rebalance itself so you have uh, the best form tree possible. So now I'm going to add start adding some larger numbers. So I'm going to put a 100 in, which is going to move all the way to the right. Now the system knows that both of these are, uh, or that 
12 and 100 were both red, so it readjusts because remember that you can never have a red parent and a red child. Uh, you have to readjust the coloring to ensure it works. So now uh, we'll add a 95. A 95 will automatically go to the left of 100, but then you'll see uh, as the system adjusts. And there you go. And it readjusts again. So you notice that this is a very dynamic type system that continually looks to find ways to make sure that the, the tree becomes balanced. And it's looking with each iteration on different ways that it can readjust itself. And it uses the, re the process it call is uh, called the recoloring. And you can see when we add, added that number, it got readjusted, and we're back to, uh, to making sure that we have the black, red, black type of uh, color scheme. And now we're going to add 55. 55 is going to look at the 11, realize it's greater. 95 is less. It's greater than 12, greater than 25. So we'll start out by going to the right, and then it's going to readjust. And there you go, we're balanced again. And now we'll start adding a few to the left hand side. So I'll add in a 16. 16 is going to realize it's greater than 11, so we'll go to the right hand side, but it's also greater than 12. And there you go, so it'll readjust again. And they're perfect. You see how even though with a traditional, just a plain tree, uh, that could have been a node that could have or unbalanced the whole tree with a red-black system, it will continually, uh, it'll continually run through the algorithm to make sure that it can remain balanced. I'm going to put in a 19 now. And you can see that's going to go all the way to the right of the 16, but then you can watch and see as it, uh, as it readjusts itself. There you go. So now 16 is the parent of both 12 and 19. And we could do this for days. I think you probably have a good sense of the way the system works. <laughs> A really important thing to know is that the root node can be changed and that's something that uh, you, that it took a little while for me to kind of understand the concept of how the entire makeup of the tree can actually change dynamically and the only uh, some of the only constants are those properties so it's very important especially if you're taking this for an algorithm class or something like that to memorize those properties and to become very familiar with them because those are really going to help you understand the way the whole process works and as you analyze the algorithm it will really help you because uh, whenever you go through recursive algorithms, knowing the formal semantics and uh, knowing the properties behind the system is what's going to help you understand it and analyze it a lot better. So, uh, and once again, just to reiterate the complexities, if you have a red-black tree, you're going to see uh, complexities of order of log n, and it's because, just like with a traditional binary search tree that's balanced, you're not going to have to iterate through that many values because you can see even though we may have given a lot of different random numbers the system continually updated continually rebalanced and so you're going to end up with those really nice uh, order of log n type of complexity so in the next video we're going to go over how to delete or remove a node from a red black tree